So if you're a fan of the OA, chances are that at some point in time, you're like, what the crap did I just see? My brain is melting. I don't totally understand everything of what was going on. Well, I'm going to do my best in this video to explain as much as I can from part two of the OA. Now, duh, there are going to be spoilers in this. So if you don't want spoilers, if you don't want it to be spoiled and you haven't watched it, get off the video right now. I have a spoiler for your review that I've linked below in the description if you care to watch that. But once you've seen it and you have some theories, come back, watch this video, add to the discussion that I hope hop happens in the comments because that way we can share all of our thoughts and theories and explanations of everything that's going on. Now I'm gonna start with Symphony, the game. There are five levels to win that. And I don't think it's a coincidence that there are five movements. And what happens when you get to the end of symphony when you actually get through the fifth level it leads you to the room that has the rose window and that's where michelle went and that's how she disappeared i think she opened it up and she traveled but her body then was left there in some kind of comatose state now I, i'll talk about more about that that comatose state in a little bit but i don't think it's a coincidence that we do have five levels of the game five five movements to travel. Every time I watch this series, I can't help but think that Homer is like Odysseus, and which the Odyssey was written by Homer. So you get that there, Homer, Odysseus, written by the, in the Odyssey, written by Homer. Anyway, Odysseus is a traveler and he is on a journey to get home. And that is not unlike Homer. I mean, Homer is, he has traveled but now he's not connected with his memories in part two. He thinks that he is a doctor. He hasn't all of that, re the rest of his memories he's repressing or he hasn't integrated fully into him, much like OA and Nina haven't done until later in the series. So I just like the fact that it, we have Homer and I like in my brain, at least, I compare him to Odysseus just on that journey. I find it more than a coincidence that Kareem, the PI, that he smokes American spirit cigarettes and tobacco. Now, if you remember the house on Knob Hill that he goes to to examine and to investigate because he feels that that is the key to something, that is built on a sacred ground for, of Native Americans. American Spirit. They are Native Americans. Anyway, there you go. And especially if you look at the logo of American Spirit, I mean, it is, it resembles Native American artwork. So I really think that this is a clue telling us that Kareem is tied to the house in some way. So far in two parts, when we've been introduced to Britt Marling's character, whether it's Prairie or Nina, she is leaving some sort of prison. In episode two, or actually in part two, when we see Nina, she's leaving Alcatraz. It's behind her and she's on the ferry. And that's when Prairie makes the leap or the travel or the jump or whatever you want to call that. And she inhabits Nina's body. And one thing that I love is when Nina falls on the boat and she's having what she thinks is a heart attack or she's saying that she's been shot and everybody else thinks she's having a heart attack, we see her sunglasses and they're reflecting her back in there. But more importantly, they have a hole in them. And which with no explanation of the hole, other than it is exactly like the bullet hole that kills Prairie in the school. And then to get even more detailed, if you look at some of the track marks, the cracks going out of that, they resemble the magnetic mosaic floor that's of tree rings that Kareem and Nina at one point put together in the Knob Hill house. So if you remember in episode one where Kareem is playing symphony and he's playing the, the, the AR part of that and he's up at the house and he's shining his phone around and he goes up into the, um, into the sky and he gets the airplane and that's the code and it's BA411. Well, I have, there's multiple theories or thoughts on what the meaning of this is. First, that's British Airways Flight 411. Now, when Nina is communicating with Old Knight, she goes into that vision and she is crawling through an airplane. And if you see, she comes up on a woman that has super short blonde hair. And we don't see the woman fully turned, but we get her a little bit. And that woman then resembles the short-headed Brit Marling in the final episode. So it's a tie and a clue that Prairie or Nina at this point, OA, for simpler terms, OA is seeing herself and maybe a clue to where she's going. Now taking the number 411, there is a belief in what's called angel numbering. Now I'm not an expert in this, but I just, I looked it up so I could kind of figure out what's going on. And 411 encourages progressive change. It's renewal. 
it's growth, and it's even to share knowledge with others. And if you think about it, that's what's going on in OA's vision when she's communicating with Old Knight, or once she's, well, once she's having an NDE, really. And then if you follow that numbering part, OA is killed by Old Knight for a very specific amount of time. Old Knight says, I have to kill you for 37 seconds. That's just seemingly random, but really it's not. In angel numbering, 37 is for clarity and wisdom. And think about it, that is what Nina Oe is getting when she goes in her vision. Now she may not totally understand it, but that's what Old Knight is trying to give her, clarity and wisdom in everything that's going on with her. Now syzygy is not just a really good Scrabble word. I mean, it's the title of one of the episodes, but more importantly, it is when three celestial bodies are in line. Think of like an eclipse, when the sun, moon, and earth are all in line together. Oa, Hap, and Homer always to seem to be in line together or with each other. I mean, Elodie, the traveler, even mentions that they are like, they have thoughts or memories of each other and remnants, and so that they are connected and so that they will always be there, which brings them to the same, those breaths and those hints and the, you know that tied together, that's what brings them always to the same dimension, which may be a tie to that creepy skin licking opening of episode five, you know what I'm talking about where Homer in some either far off land or just way in the past, I mean, he's there and he's got all those, those I don't know, branches or whatever, and he trades wood for skin and he, yeah, just weird and gross. Another idea within the syzygy thinking is Oe, Kareem, and the Knob Hill house. I mean, think about it. When they are in line, just miraculous things happen. When the kids are traveling to see the medium, they hit a possum. And at that point, we see Jesse. He kills it because it is suffering. He puts it out of his misery. And I think that's a little bit of foreshadowing for what is coming for Jesse himself, because we see that he is in pain, that he is suffering. Now, we don't totally know exactly what that is, but we do see that, and thus it ends up he kills himself, puts himself out of the misery. Now, when Rachel visits BBA and the kids and she sends that message, why is BBA the only one that it's safe to travel? Well, that's because Michelle or Buck is already gone and theoretically not there. I mean, has traveled on. So her body is kind of, or his body is vacant, I guess, maybe. But Steve, Jesse, and French's bodies are, they're dead because Hap has already killed them. And so they're laying in stasis in that, that funky pond thing where, you know, the vines are growing out of their head. So therefore, BBA is the only one who can travel, even though we never see her in the dimension with San Francisco where OA is. On Homer's awkward date, they reference Pyramus and Thisbe, and those are two lovers that are kept apart by a wall and who ultimately meet just gruesome deaths, not unlike Romeo and Juliet. So is this foreshadowing for OA and Homer? I mean, think about it. In part one, they're kept apart by that glass wall in the, the five-sided prison. And then in episode, or in part two rather, they're kept apart because of Homer's memory and his lack of integration with the new body. When OA visits Old Knight, he says that she has a brother who is always with him and is protecting him. And at first I thought it was Kareem because Kareem is really there. I mean, he's the one that saves her from, saves her from Old Knight. I mean, he resuscitates her. And then he's there, you know, throughout to kind of help her along the way in part two, but we never get to see him in part one. So the question I bring up is, is Steve really her brother? The one that is there to protect her? Because you think about it, he protects her in season one. He's there, he's chasing after her. He's trying to be there for her. In season two, he's trying to get to her. I mean, so desperately because he knows that she needs him or he needs to be with her. And then at the end of part two, he's the one chasing after the ambulance and he finally makes it on. I think he also is the one who teaches the movements. I mean, he's the one that she put in charge really to teach everybody else the movements. And so he even teaches his girlfriend in the regular dimension or the first dimension, I guess. I don't know how to keep it straight really, but how to do that. So I know maybe this is all a reach and I don't know, we'll find out come part three. Maybe that's totally blown out of the water. We'll find out who her actually brother is, or maybe she really does have a brother and it's literal brother, not just a figurative one. I don't know. I talked about at the beginning, Michelle being in a comatose state. 
And if you think back to the episode, the, uh, the engineer and the medium, or the medium and the engineer, whatever that is, where there's the two, the engineer and the medium who build the house, the story says that the medium comes home to find the engineer in a coma, just in a comatose state. His body was there because he had gone through the house to the rose window, but he hadn't necessarily gone through the puzzle way. I mean, he had figured out a different way to get there or whatever it was. But I think that the engineer is a traveler himself because Michelle in the San Francisco dimension goes through the window, makes the leap, leaves her body there as comatose. And the only time we find that out is kind of towards the end of, the, of part two. But then we are also told that the engineer was left comatose until he died. And I think that's because nobody else came to fill his body. So his body just gave out naturally after having nothing in it. I don't know. What does that make sense to you? So it's revealed to us that OA can only survive in a tribe. And that's the others, the kids and BBA. That, and really anybody else she comes in contact with, that she cannot survive on her own. Just like a tree, if one of them starts to feel ill, the rest of them come to the rescue. But the trees also give Nina the warning that Hap is going to try and destroy her faith in herself. And so I think that is truly foreshadowing going on for what's going to come in part three. Because at the end of part two, we see that as Nina or as Oe is making the jump, as she's getting ready to travel, she's startled and interrupted and she falls. Now she does make the jump, but we don't know what that ascension was going to be because we've never actually seen her rising up in the air and glowing. And she jumps into what is presumably our dimension because she jumps into the body of Britt Marling on a movie set and Hap is Jason Isaacs. And so when she's unconscious and he hops on there and says, I'm her husband, this could be the opportunity for him to confuse her or to let her know that no, 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 you can't do this on your own. It's me that you need also. Whatever that is, he's planning something that is just going to eat away at her and tear her just her, her self-worth or her self-confidence away and take away her power. Also, I'm curious to find out because Nina in the San Francisco dimension is a medium, when OA jumps into her, she absorbs that all of that knowledge, power, skill, whatever you want to call it. So as she begins to make more and more travels, will she acquire those skills as well from the, from the people that she goes, I mean, it's her, in other dimensions, but presumably they all have different skill sets, different talents, different powers, whatever you want to call it. I guess the key to that is though that she will have to remember to fully allow her conscious to integrate with that so that she truly can absorb the, that knowledge and that power. I love in the episode with Elodie that we have lightning crashes by live. I mean, some of the lyrics just parallel OA so well. When you have the angel opens her eyes and confusion sets in. That. Every time we've seen OA, she's like, what's going on? When she opens her eyes, it's just a new experience. And she's just, what? And then it's the angel closes her eyes and the confusion now belongs to a baby down the hall. Meaning that when she jumps, it's gonna happen again. You also have part of the line, the force is pulling from a center of the universe again. I mean, that is like the five movements. It is pulling in some sort of power of the universe and just the force that's doing that, which allows somebody to travel to a new dimension. It's not by accident that they put that song in there. Now in episode six, it is shown that Riz Ahmed's character, Elias, is also a traveler and he is sent there to help her on her journey, to help OA. And it's not unlike when Rachel went into the mirror, Riz Ahmed is standing in front of a mirror and when he speaks, you see it pulse. And so it just, before he even says, who he is and why he's there, we get that visual glimpse of the mirror pulsing that he is a traveler. He is just like Elodie, just like Rachel, just like Away, and really even just like the kids, maybe, because if they learn to travel or if they're able to travel as well. I love it also that during that whole scene, BBA has really just taken on a new awareness to her surroundings, that she can't necessarily see all of the other travelers in all of the other dimensions going on around her, but she feels their presence. So I think that's really gonna play a part in the upcoming parts, because otherwise, why would you reference something as awesome as that? And so it will be curious to see if they actually show it or if they only show BBA experiencing it. 
I really hope that we get answers into Kareem and his past and what is keeping him from wanting to have a child. I mean, it, it is assumed and probably 100% accurate that Mo is pregnant with Kareem's child, that the story he tells Oa when she's trying to remember the code without remembering it and he's distracting her with the story, he's telling her about himself. And I think that it's just it'll be interesting to find out why doesn't Kareem want to bring a child in? What does he know? What has he experienced? And how does that play into the larger story? Now, Hap, who eats the, the little stem and then the leaf or the petal, I mean, it's, it's akin to him taking the red pill because what that does is that opens his eyes to all of these new possibilities, all of these new experiences, and it just, it brings into his wealth of knowledge. I got a question for you that I do not know is why did all of the dreamers see Kareem? Why is it that he specifically is drawn to the house? We see Oa fully integrate with Nina and get all of her memories as well. And then we finally see Homer do the same thing. Once Oa touches him and they reach through the glass and he, he fully gets it. But we have clues that Hap has not fully integrated. We have Homer who has to tell Hap what DID is. And if he is truly the psychologist or the psychiatrist or therapist or whatever he is, he would already know what DID is than the multiple, multiple personality disorder that goes within there, but he doesn't. And then when OA comes as Nina to sit down with him, she has to tell him that the vodka is hidden behind the Anna Karenina novel. He doesn't know that. And he's caught off guard that it's there. And so that really is clues that Hap is not necessarily tapping into all of the previous experiences that, that his body, the doctor there, has taken on. T.S. Eliot's poem, Little Gidding, is what is inscribed on the door in the house on Knob Hill that Kareem reads. And it's, I mean, it's just an excerpt of the poem. It's not the entire poem. But in there, Eliot is talking about travelers and he's talking about the journey and that how it is a circular journey so that when people begin and then they end, they end up where they begin and only then can they understand the beginning. That makes sense, but that's like OA. And that's like all of these travelers that when they make a journey, I mean, they leap into another body, but they have to fully integrate all of those memories and all of those thoughts to become who they are so that they remember why they're there and what they're doing. Another part of the poem is that we won't stop traveling, that we won't stop learning, and that we will go to an unremembered gate. Is that the rose window? Is that another dimension? Is that the final jump? I don't know. What I do know is that all of these travels are bringing us closer to some sort of resolution. And at the resolution, that's the end. And just like Eliot's poem, once we get to the end, maybe we will fully understand the beginning. Think about this. At the end of part two, we have Hap, Homer, and Nina and Oa on Treasure Island. And they're in the middle of these five mechanical uh, just units. And they resemble what Elodie had, and it's assumed that Hap built these larger ones because he was able to open up one of the smaller ones. As those mechanical units are doing the movements, the kids in the first dimension in Treasure Island are doing the movements as well because thanks to BBA, she knows where they're at because she can see or feel the presence of others Tra other travelers in other dimensions. And so she's able to lead them where OA is. And then as they start to do all of the movements, now this is where it's crazy. Buck jumps twice. He jumps through the San Francisco dimension into our dimension, what I'm calling our dimension where uh, Brit Marling is Brit Marling, but then sees Kareem. And as Kareem calls to him and calls him Michelle, at that point makes the leap back to San Francisco to take the body or take yeah to go into the body of Michelle and wake up that that's just crazy right there and then Steve did the same thing except minus back to San Francisco he went through I guess well he just went to where OA is going and where J uh, Jason Isaacs also went and presumably Homer did as well. I, I didn't really see him or I don't remember him being in there. But that that is mind-blowing of all the jumps that happened at the end of part two. So what lies in store for part three? Hopefully we do not have to wait two years to find out what all is going on. 
Now, what did I miss? What did I get wrong? What are your thoughts and theories? Please share them in the comments below. Let's have a really good discussion. I love learning from you. I love hearing all of your thoughts and all of your theories and all of your takes on stuff because it just helps me learn too. And it makes me appreciate the series that much more. If you enjoyed this explanation, please consider giving it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.